shape, rattle and troll. All righty, hey, uh, Don McDowell and John Collins are here with Shake Rattle and Troll. Uh, appreciate you joining us. We've got a really special guest. Don Trump Jr. is in the house uh, visiting with us. Uh, as you know, the Arizona polls are up in Trump's favor. We're not a swing state anymore. I think we're going uh, Republican. I know you've got a busy schedule. Thanks for coming in. And uh, before we get started, I know you and Eric are quite the hunters and uh, fishermen. Who's a better fisherman, you or Eric? Uh, you know, I, think, I, think, tell, tell, I think fisherman, tell, tell, I have to take tell. that one because I, I, I do a lot more fishing. Eric's an incredible shooter. You know, we're both competitive shooters uh, as well. we both avid hunters. I, I do a lot more fishing uh, when, when hunting season isn't on, so uh, I, I probably got the fishing one a little bit. Well, you're, you're in good company. That That's what we do. Uh, I'm hearing rumors you shot a whitetail buck with a pistol at 150, 70 yards. Is, I, that, is I, that a true story? I, it is. I, I have a couple, you know, I'm sort of into some of the specialty pistols as well. So I have a couple of the old Remington XPs and I do all my own hand wow. loading. I'm a competitive long range shooter. So, uh, you know, I, I have my, my go-to deer gun is usually actually a seven millimeter 08 Thompson Center Encore. Uh, you know, and it's, nice. it, it's a great little gun. It, you know, adds that extra challenge cause it's a lot harder to obviously support a, a handgun when you're hunting. So, uh, I like to keep it challenging. That's good stuff. Let's get started. Let's talk about uh, Mr. Trump. Uh, We've been lobbying pretty hard here in the state of Arizona with the Republicans and sportsmen. We've got roughly 800,000 sportsmen here that uh, we hunt, we fish, we vote, and uh, most all of us are Republicans. We've got some concerns uh, nationally. We've got uh, BLM management by restriction, the Forest Service same way. We've got greater sage grouse. Uh, The guys on the left want to restrict 165 million acres in 11 states. Uh, going into this, uh, what's Mr. Trump's thoughts on uh, protecting the sportsmen in, in our heritage? Well, listen, I, you know, it's been an honor for me. It's, I'm such an unlikely candidate to be the person you know, out there speaking for sportsmen. I'm the son of a rich guy from New York, but it was such an important part of my life. Uh, growing up, you know, I always say that because I was in a tree stand at four o'clock in the morning, or I was in a duck blind at four thirty in the morning, uh, it kept me out of a lot of other trouble I would have gotten into otherwise. And so, you know, we want to preserve the great tradition of the outdoors, of hunting and fishing, uh, and certainly shooting. And I always say, for me, that if I can get a kid off a couch and away from a video game and into the woods or on a stream or on a range, I'm doing them a big service for life. So, we got to keep our public lands public. We're actually going away from a lot of the Republican, you know, dogma on that. We want to keep our public lands open and public. Now, we believe that we can use them for multi-purpose. I mean, we can ha- take advantage of the energy that's in our ground. We can do these things, but we got to keep them open to the public because if you had a place that you used to hunt that was 20 minutes away from your home and now you have to drive three hours, well, guess what? You know, you're going to take up golf. You're going to take up a different hobby. Uh, you know, it- it's been such an important and vital part of you know my life, my brother's life growing up. Uh, we got to preserve that tradition. We got to keep it alive at all costs, and that makes sure that we're taking advantage of our our public lands and making sure that they're accessible to the public. Well, we have a federal fault line. Uh uh, what, what, let's say west of the Mississippi, uh, Arizona, Utah, Colorado, Nevada, especially is 85 percent public lands. Yes, and uh, there's been some uh, fallout on uh, Mr. Dahl and uh, Mr. Trump had a conversation, and obviously some negative press that he's flip flopping on uh, public lands. But, but my point is, you can't you can't come up with a solution in a three-minute interview on public not. lands. No, but, you know, what I think the sportsmen have to know and what they have known. I mean, I was a speaker at the NRA show. I was speaking at, you know, I'm a member of Boone and Crockett, you know, uh, probably the youngest member that they have on there. I mean, this is a big part of our lives. This is a big part of what we do. I've, I've been on the political trail now for a lot, so it's funny. They say, well, you're at a shoot with some other politician, right? And I'm like, yeah, you mean the guy with his finger on the trigger with the safety off pointing his barrel at someone? It's like, that guy's not a sportsman. Okay, he doesn't, you know, there's a difference between showing up for the photo op and actually being a sportsman, actually living the lifestyle. And we actually live that lifestyle. And I think, you know, the sportsmen that I've seen around the country, they get it. You know, they see when I talk about hunting, whatever hunting it may be, when, they, when I talk about reloading, when I talk about competitive shooting, they're like, wait a minute, that guy knows what he's talking about. He actually is speaking for us. Uh, and it's been great because those guys are going to turn up. You know, the hunters, the fishermen, you know, if you have a cold day, especially up north and some of the swing states, we have a little bit more of a weather issue than here. Well, guess what? On November 8th, if it's raining and snowing, that's our comfort zone. They're going to turn up. We have two seasons, big summer and little summer. <laughs> Exactly. It's a little. It's a little different, but uh, you know, it. Uh, the outdoors has been an amazing thing to me, and we're going to preserve it. I have a question. In terms of, I know that your father has always supported the fact that number one, he does not hunt, but number two, he has thoroughly supported both of all of his children if they so desire to hunt, which is what we want from the rest of the public in the United States. That's all it is. I mean, listen, he grew up. He was a boy from Queens, right? He didn't have the opportunities that I had, but you know, my grandfather got me into hunting. He was a he was I, a blue collar guy. Yeah, he was a blue collar electrician from what was then communist Czechoslovakia, right? Yeah. So he was, you know, 
just a regular, ordinary guy. And he saw the lifestyle that we were growing up in in New York, and he said, that's great. You have a lot of advantage. You have a lot of you know incredible opportunities with this, but you should also see the other side. And him and my father spoke about it quite a bit. And so from about the age of five, he took me every summer for five, six weeks. I spoke the language fluently because he was a big part of my life. And he basically brought me over there and said, you know, there's the woods. I'll see you at dark. And so, you know, I fell in love. And you couldn't hunt over there because you weren't, you know, he right. wasn't a Communist Party elite guy. He wasn't. Uh, but, you know, I spent so much time in the woods. He taught me how to shoot an air gun. He taught me how to shoot a bow. And then I got into it here. And then I had so many people along the way that served as mentors. And that's what I'm, that's why I'm so vocal about it. And I've been attacked for being a hunter. And I've been, I didn't do the usual, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. I, I fought you back. Can't. And said, hey, conservationists, dude, this is what they did. We have these public lands. We have the fauna and flora that we have in this country because of conservationists that are the, you know, hunters are the original conservationists, starting with Roosevelt. Right. Uh, and so, you know, I, I fought back and I took it. And so many people have been great mentors to me. That's why now that perhaps I have a platform where I can talk about it and I can talk about the benefits of the outdoors and what it's done for me in my life and what it's going to do for my kids that are all, you know, outdoors on our every weekend. We don't spend any weekends in New York City. We haven't, I haven't spent a weekend in New York City in over a decade. You know, we get up, we go to my cabin in the Catskills, they're riding ATVs, they're fishing, they're all shooting. The two-year-old hasn't shot yet, but most of the, all the other ones have. <laughs> uh, the way it should be. You know, it's, it's been so beneficial in my life. We got to talk about it and we got to preserve it and not back down to these people who try to vilify what we do. Well, we're, we're concerned like the rest of the country. We've got national security issues. We've got a hell of an open border here in the southern part of yeah. the state. We've got a Department of Homeland Security demarcation line and 25,000 plus square miles where it's not safe to hunt because of the illegals coming over, the drug trafficking. Uh, we've got uh, monuments here that we're probably going to get uh, when Mr. Lame Duck uh, goes into uh, December. Bears Ears, uh, 1.9 million acres in Utah, another monument. Northern Arizona, we're getting uh, 1.7, it looks like, uh, 446,000. And this is all by executive orders. Mr. Trump ready to attack those executive orders. Well, on, he's uh, spoken about that a lot. I mean, yeah. whether it's those executive orders or the, you know, the ones on that they've put in place on gun control, which are, you know basically only limits law-abiding citizens, does nothing against the okay. actual problem. You know, We won't talk about actually having penalties for people who commit crimes with guns. We'll talk about trying to limit your and my rights because we're the only ones that are actually going to play by those rules. Uh, you know, so my father's talked about that extensively. Obviously, each case is an individual an individual one, but, you know, these places where they're overreaching, where they're trying to limit hunters' access to do the things that we love, and that's what we got to remember. And that's why, you know, part of my message when I'm talking to hunters, when I'm talking to shooters, when I'm talking to fishermen is, you know, your hobby is hunting, fishing, shooting. And so many of those guys say, I, you know, I don't want to mix politics with it. It's it's special to me and it's sacred. And I get that. It was say, it, it is for me too. But the other side, their hobby is messing with your hobby. No, it's it's yeah. infringing on your hobby. It's infringing on your rights. It's they're infringing on, you know, they're, they're basically hunting your freedoms uh, and, and your ability to do the things that you love, the things you want to do with your kids, the things you want to pass on from generation to generation. So you got to get out and vote. You got you to gotta be vocal about it. You can't let, you know, the media and the liberals and the people on Facebook try to paint you in a bad corner because you're a hunter. It's ridiculous. Uh, we have to preserve that tradition. Well, the Dems are trying to, you know, uh, Supreme Court's a big deal uh, f- for us right one. here. I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, uh, a full generation uh, if that goes south. Well, you uh, probably never recover from that. No, I, and, I, I don't. Th- how and, could we? You know, because the kids, the younger, the next generation, you know, they, they grow up in this with this, you know, liberal, you know, activism off the bench. And it just becomes sort of the norm. You know, so this isn't a four or eight year election. This is actually a 30 no. or 40 year election. When exactly. you look at the, you know, we're not just replacing Scalia, who was, by the way. The, the tiebreaker in the, you know, the 5-4 Heller decision, which was just basically, hey, you're allowed to have a gun in your home. I mean, think about it. I mean, that's all Heller said, right? And that was a 5-4 decision that you could have a gun in your home. And Hillary Clinton says the Supreme Court got that one wrong. I mean, think about what that means. I mean, the Second Amendment, right after freedom of speech and, and religion, you know, this wasn't some afterthought our founding fathers thought of later on. No. I mean, it was the second thing that they said in their minds, like, we got to protect that right so that people can defend themselves, that my wife, when I'm traveling on the road, can maybe take care of my five children and protect them in the event that someone much meaner, much bigger, much more aggressive, with much less of a moral compass, decides to try to do harm or try to break into our house. I mean, that that's not even contestable to me. I don't even, I don't even know how it's a political firestorm. So, you know, we have to get out and we have to be heard because if we're not... Uh, it's going to be gone, and it's going to be gone soon. Well, there's one way for her to get the message: is take all of her secret security away, take all of her guns, and let let her go out and travel like uh, John Key, the plumber. Well, listen, it's even you know, I see it in you know, I live in the People's Republic of New York, right? And I'm a competitive high power shooter, right? So a lot of that stuff is going to be based off an AR platform. I can't even buy an AR in New York anymore. I can't bring one into the state. I mean, I have some grandfathered in because I had them obviously before, but you can't even have that in New York anymore. So I've seen how quickly. 
those rights can disappear, how quickly they can be pulled away from you. And by the way, it's always written by someone who's never been on a range, who's never exactly. fired anything. They don't even exactly. know what it is. They don't know the difference between semi-automatic, fully automatic. They wouldn't know a muzzle from a trigger. You know, and yet they're legislating. I mean, when the SAFE Act, quote unquote, was passed in New York, literally every police officer in the state was committing a felony because they had full capacity magazines in their service, you know, in their service guns going into work the next we'll day. Figure. But you had people that had no idea. They're writing laws with something they don't understand. And I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. One of the big pushes, uh, one of J.K.'s uh, passionate buttons, uh, Endangered Species Act, with all the uh, listings that don't need to be listed. Any mm-hmm. thoughts on that? Well, listen, I, I, everything is case by case. I mean, there are things that deserve to be on there, and the things that are they're using it as a scapegoat to try to prevent you from getting getting there. Otherwise, yeah. well, you know, so you know, obviously, sage grouse is something that needs you got to protect it in a way, but you don't have to block off you know a quarter of the country and say you can't do any oil development, you can't do any. I mean. You know, we, we have to be able to take advantage of the things that are on our ground, and there's no reason. We've seen it in some of the states where they've done that. You know, the, the big potash mine in Utah that was reclaimed and redone, it's like it holds more elk and it holds more mule deer and more sheep than it ever did before uh, it, it was developed and utilized. So we have to be able to utilize the natural resources that we have. That's jobs. That's our economy. And more importantly, it's national security. Okay, if we're energy ind- independent and we're not beholden to these countries and far off lands that if they could push a button would wipe us off the face of the earth forever, you know, people who can't stand our values, can't stand anything that we d- we're more concerned about what keeping them employed. Why? Because they donated twenty five million dollars to the Clinton Foundation. You know, it's ridiculous. We have to take care of ourselves first, and we have to make sure that we're utilizing these things. I'm not saying it should be done haphazardly. There's ways to do it, but we have the technology to do that, and we have the ability to do that. Uh, we should be taking advantage of the resources that we have, putting our people to work, Americans. Uh, and these are the hardworking people in America that have just been forgotten by the political class. By the way, by the political class on both sides. Uh, I'd, oh, say, I'd say that's a partisan yeah. problem, right? Oh. The people in Washington, they've created all these problems. They have no idea how to fix them because they don't know what they're doing. They become politicians because they couldn't do it in the real world oftentimes. You know, and, and then they get in there. They get stuck. All their friends are getting the jobs that should be going to other people. They're not even contested. We're, we always knew about it. Now we're reading about it every day in WikiLeaks. You know, the corruption is so rampant. Uh, it, it's disgusting. And, you know, my it dad's a guy that can shake coming. that up. He can get in there. He can shake this thing up uh, and, and go back to what our founding fathers envisioned, which is you know, a person getting into government for the right reasons, doing it for a short amount of time, and then getting back in the real world, not parking themselves for 40 years, making promises they're never going to deliver uh, you know, while, while stealing, cheating, lying, and selling American influence uh, to the highest bidder for themselves. It's just absolutely crazy what's going on here in Arizona. I'm, I'm really happy to see the uh, poll switch today. Uh, I think we're we're definitely going to go uh, Republican here. Yeah, I know. It feels good. I mean, I had such a great reception. It's an honor to be a small part of it for me, I, you know, to go around and see so many people who have been so disaffected by the political system. Oh, so so uh, many people just absolutely. angry uh, with what their politicians have, you know, the position they've put us in. I mean, think about it. I mean, if you ran your household like these guys run this country, You'd be living on the streets, and yet it's okay for them to do it. And they keep getting reelected, and they keep adding more debt, and it, it doesn't work. They keep running money. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, well, exactly. well they're spending your money. Yeah. They're not yeah. spending their own yeah. money. Mi- That's the difference. Mi- Mr. Trump's, uh, you know, hit a hit a roll uh, hot spot with, with a lot of us here in Arizona. That's to drain the drain the swamp concept. I love it. I, yeah, I it, agree. It I mean, needs term to limits, be drained. term limits, and preventing these guys at high level of government, people that know everything, that know everyone, that have our secrets, then going off and lobbying for Qatar, for Saudi Arabia, for these. I mean, think about that. I mean, we allow this to happen. They get into government basically so they can get a job working for the benefit of another country and, and make millions of it later on. It doesn't work. Don, one of the things we've been fighting here is the lack of party unity. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're on, they're off, they're on, they're off, they're yeah. on, they're off, and you, they're going to pay a price for it. I, I think they are, but you know what? You know why that is? Because both sides, like I said, I, you know, listen, I'm a conservative guy. Uh, I think you've seen that. I think you've heard that. Oh, you, absolutely. You, you get, you know, but... At the same time, even a lot of the guys on the right, the ones that pull and they change their mind, you know, they stomp their chest really loud and they beat their chest really loud and then they go on the floor of the House or of the Senate and what do they do? They fold exactly. each and every time, you know? So it doesn't mean anything if you have no conviction. And so these guys have also gotten very rich off of this system. Look, we the, can't, you know, so they, they, they see wanted, my father as a big threat. because They he, wanted the Senate. Yeah. They wanted the Congress. Hey, they've had the House we and the Senate. Gave what have they done? We and they've done nothing. anything. They, you, 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 you might, the, the, the Democrats might as well have it because it's not like the Republicans have done anything with it. Uh, you know, but so many of the Republicans, and some have been great, and some have been incredibly supportive from day one, you know, whether it's Sessions, whether all these guys. But the others that just go and, you know, they see a system that they, has got them really rich too. It's not just the Democrats. 
This is a partisan oh, problem. Yeah. Oh, and they say, hey, I don't want someone's going to shake up this system. I'm, I'm really content with this lifestyle. I, I really, I'm making a lot of money yeah, off the good. backs of the American people. I've got a lot of power. I'm going to do a lot of cool things. Uh, I don't want to give that up. Uh, so, you know, they see my father as a threat because he is a threat to that system. But that's a system that's failed the American people. And the American people have to think about that when they vote. Well, he's got some awfully good endorsements with the uh, NRA, the Border Patrol. I, I, yeah. I really uh, applaud him for putting out his 100-day uh, 100, 100 plan, yeah. all the points, the uh, Supreme Court uh, yep. uh, app, you know, nominees, whatever. Uh, it, it's solid. Yeah, well, we also got some great support from the hunting community. You know, a lot of the guys, you know, the big names in the hunting community, whether it's Waddell, all these other guys that have come out, you know, that have just been like, hey, this guy gets it. This family understands our traditions and our lifestyle. Uh, so it, it's just been awesome. You know, Waddell, Keith Mark, uh, you know, very, Cuz Strickland, really all these guys. For, for anybody who's going into the political offices, I can't tell you. The, I mean, I know one of the Bushes, um, Bush Sr., he did a little bit of bird hunting once in a while. But for somebody like yourself who is an advocate and who is so yeah. passionate about it, which we normally don't see anybody associated nah. with politics in the D.C., the Beltway there, ever being involved in the hunting community. Yeah. It's yeah. refreshing to know well, that Well, there's a know. couple guys that know what they're doing, and then there's, like I said earlier, there's a couple guys that show up for the photo op. Right. Uh, I, I think we had, we had a good one like that when uh, I, I've hunted with, you know, the Robertsons are buddies of mine and, you know, Jace and, you know, uh, Willie and all those guys, and, you know, they, they took me out hunting, and that, uh, Willie was debating with his father about the presidency. He was like, well, well, you know, who's the better shot? This is back during the primary. He's like, well, that boy from New York can shoot. And so I was like, that was, that was the ultimate you know, when uh, you know when, when Phil Roberts is saying you know you're the best shooter they've had in a duck blind in 30 years it was a it was a pretty good compliment so I'll take it oh god yeah that's awesome would you hunt with him absolutely I'll yeah. call for you any day perfect yeah. I the, love it the, this guy right here is probably the uh, the best elk caller in the love state it. yeah very nice we'll, we'll have to change some pictures you know I I haven't done much hunting this year because right now we're uh, we're hunting a bigger uh, a, a bigger game kind of deal, uh, but you know, after November 9th, I look forward to getting you know back in the tree stand and doing a little bit more. But yeah, no, I had to cancel a couple good hunts that I was supposed to be on uh, uh, this year because you know saving the free worlds may be a little bit more important. Maybe yeah. a little bit more. It, 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 it's, a, it's a close call, but uh, first the world in the elk. I like exactly. It. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's good priorities. Uh, let's get this thing wrapped up. What are your final words to our sportsmen? Listen, I think we've covered a lot of it, but I, I think the yeah. biggest thing is you know get out. Get your friends out. You know, hey, you, you, you want to believe if I'm real? Like, look me up. Look up me and hunting. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you'll, absolutely. you'll see plenty at this point. And, uh, you know, know that, you know, we're going to be the voice in my father's ear as it relates to these issues and make sure that we, you know, we understand what the tradition of the great outdoors means in this country and what it means generation to generation. And I want to make sure that's around for my five young kids because I have what, nine, seven, five, four, and two year old. Uh, you know, and I want to get them out there. I mean, I actually had my, my seven year old son, I took him on a backpack hunt up in the Yukon. You know, earlier this summer at seven, uh, because you know what? You put a kid in that kind of situation, and then they can rise to the occasion. This kid was like a little mountain goat, man. He was a stud. I couldn't believe it. You know, and knowing full well that that could ruin the hunt, uh, I was out there actually with Mark Geist, one of the survivors from Benghazi, who's become yeah. a good friend of mine. And yeah. you know, we, we had an awesome hunt up there for caribou and everything. And you know, just you know, but having a little guy in a camp like that, he was you know, he was one of the guys. And I, I think that can do a lot for you know the formative years of a kid. So just you know, make sure that all the hunters get out, get their friends out, call your friends in the other swing states, Absolutely. in the places that yep. matter. You know, be vocal yep. about it, and, and more importantly, not just for this election, because you know the next two weeks. Obviously, it's very selfish for me to say that, but like, hunters have to make their voices known. They have to get out there. They have to be vocal, because if they're vocal and they can show that, hey, we, we're going to show up, we're going to move the needle, we're going to move the needle in these elections, where it may matter even more on a state level in many cases, right? The politicians will actually start catering to you. If you hide, even if you show up but you're not vocal about it, you know, they're not going to think about the issues that matter to you, that matter to us as outdoorsmen. So, you know, it's not just about the presidency right now. This is all future elections. Get out, vote, be vocal, make sure that our issues are heard because if you're vocal about it and there's enough of us and we're talking about it, guess what? Politicians may actually listen. I'd like to thank our Arizona guys with the uh, onslaught from the left and the uh, enviral get litigants, as John likes to call them. As yeah. much noise as they've made, as much uh, uh, going backwards as, as we've had to put up with, we're taking the fight to Washington. We're taking the yeah. fight to the politicians. And uh, my belief is the hunting community has just about had enough. I agree. You know, Sierra they should. Club, CBD, and all those guys. Get they're, involved they're now done. before it's too late. Let, let, let's go to uh, November 9th. Uh, seniors going to the White House. What do you have in store for yourself? I'm going to a tree stand. 
I, I, I've missed too many weekends on the road where I haven't been able to hunt. Where I, you know, I, I'm gonna he, he's gonna do that. I'm gonna spend some time with my kids and uh and start my hunting season a little bit late. Good. Any uh, political aspirations for yourself? You know, I, I believe that you would be the best candidate for the uh, Secretary of the Department of Interior. Well, that, that was the big joke around the Christmas tables. That's the only thing I'd actually want. My father just said, he, it's like, the problem is he may just go off into the woods in Alaska never to be heard from again, yeah, which would actually go. be rather tempting. So, you know, I, I'll be involved certainly on the periphery, uh, you know, making sure that the right people are in place for that, make sure that these issues are heard. I, you know, I, again, for me, uh, maybe someday with politics, I probably after this process, now that I've seen how the sausage is made, I may have to take a good decade or so just to <laughs> just to recover because I guess when you're effective, they go after you and they're going after me. I mean, I, it's it is crazy. I mean, I, I see. I'll remember an interview and they'll they'll manipulate it so much. You know, I was talking the other day, one of you know after the last debate, going into the spin room and. They're saying, well, what about this? I say, well, we're talking, and I say, you know, the Clintons have made $250 million being politicians. They've never created a job, never done this, never done anything other than, you know, sell our influence uh, and peddle influence and yada, yada. I go, for my father, he's not going to do that. He's already made his fortune. When he goes to the White House, it's going to be a step down from salary. Trump Jr. says going to the White House is a step down. It's like, are you kidding? Like, it's so dishonest. You literally can't say anything right. It's it, it's it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm, you, you don't even, It's not even worth fighting it. Uh, you know, everything has been so sensationalized. So it's, it's not at all what I said, but, you know, the way they manipulate it, it makes it hard for someone who has a life and wants to live it and enjoys what he does already to want to get involved. At the same time, uh, you know, that look in someone's face when they see hope, you know, that you can actually do that. And I've, I've gotten to see that a lot on this trail. It's, you know, so many of these people that are voting for us that, you know, weren't even, cons- you know, conservative voters necessarily. They were Democrats that were their first time voters that have never voted in their lives you know, every day come up to me and say, hey, we just registered last week so we could vote for you guys. You know, you see that look of hope, and it it, it does sort of say, you know, may, maybe you just got to do it. Maybe you got to do it, and it'd be an honor to be able to do it one day. Anything to add, Special K? Yeah, I, I think the, the critical aspects of all that he's talked about is, is that while hunters and fishermen may disagree on certain items, it's very critical this year, of all years, that we all get out and vote. I've already done that. I'm an early ballot caster, well so, you know, mine's done already, so I can be elk hunting next weekend, Perfect. which is fine for me. But there's, there's so many issues that are going to be facing us in the future, and... The critical aspects of all of this is is that if we don't have people who understand our needs, and obviously Donald does, it's that's the kind of thing that will eventually lay waste to us. One hundred percent. And by the way, that's even within the hunting community. Oh, I know. I see that a lot. I mean, I see that back. You know, I I shoot bows, compounds, recurves, crossbows. I, you know, I I hunt with everything. But you have guys. You know, the recurve guys. We don't want crossbows. You know what? I want someone in the woods. Yes. You know, someone in the woods, someone who's buying a license. You know, it gives us critical mass. You know, so I, I see a lot of even fighting within the community. Uh, you see there with some of the guys that like to shoot a little bit further than some of the other guys. It's like, you know what, guys? We're all after the same things. Maybe we do it a little differently. Maybe we do it whatever it may be. But we should all, you know, make sure that we're banding together and really thinking about these things. Because the infight, you know, don't spend your money infighting. Uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. Let's, let's, let's protect the general notion of what we're trying to do. Good words. All right. We're going to get this thing wrapped up. Listen, God love you. Uh, the best to Mr. Trump. Give him my regards. Uh, you've got our vote. Arizona, Arizona is going to carry the Trumps uh, to the hill. I think so, man. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate you coming down. Mr. Thank you. Trump.